Once upon a time, there were many Robins in the Batman family, and those Robins needed to go to war. This is the Comic Story and Channel, where we take some of your favorite trade paperbacks and single issues, and I break them down into digestible bites to help you understand. Then I read them dramatically back to you. All alterations of the panels, text, and images are to prevent copyright problems, and all art is owned by its respective companies. Today we're going to do the story of Robin War, which wasn't very long, and I need to explain it real quick. You see, our full story series is us grabbing a bunch of videos as they tie together to bring you a more complete story. The Robin War involves two core groups. You see, all the way back in New 52, Damian Wayne died, actually died. And when he did, there was a brief period in the history of DC Comics where a group known as We Are Robin started. The general idea was that any kid in the city of Gotham could be Robin, and that they needed to take the responsibility to save Gotham themselves. On the other side of the world, Damian Wayne was revived from the dead and went on a journey known as the Year of Blood. The Year of Blood was him basically trying to redeem himself for all of the actions he did before he died. Then they all came together for the inevitable Robin War. Those are going to be the three videos we covered today, which is a little bit shorter in a full story series, but Robin War is still a cool idea, and I wanted to remind you guys about it. So here we go with Robin War. Things begin with Duke Thomas getting punched in the face. As he hits the ground, he thinks to himself, I'm getting better. Took me two whole weeks to get kicked out of this school. Took two days last time. The reason they want to beat him up really doesn't matter, and they come running in with bats. So he backflips over a fence, and he starts to take them down one at a time. Until it's Duke Thomas and three kids that he beat up. The police arrive and Duke's a little distracted by them, so the kids throw a chain, splitting Duke's head open and knocking him to the ground. He drifts off into a dream of Batman saving him. Eventually, he wakes up on Leslie Tompkins' couch, rubbing his head. He's been in and out of Leslie's office multiple times. She wants to find him a good home and help him get back on track. But Duke only wants to find his parents. In his opinion, the police have been failing at that job and only he can find them. So while she is setting him up in yet another foster home, some interesting individuals are putting on some costumes and slapping an R on their clothes. They're also texting each other that they are tracking Duke and that they're gonna need him. Duke quickly finds a way out of the foster home that he was put in and he starts looking for any sort of clue to begin his investigation once again. His adventure takes him down into the old Gotham subway tunnels and deeper into Gotham Underground until he finds two random individuals talking about going to the light. He'll track every wrongdoing going on in Gotham until he finds his parents. And that's when he realized that he stumbled onto something much bigger than he originally thought. A man with a large nose is going on about purifying all of Gotham through bombings and setting them up all over the city. All of the people listening to him seem to be in a zombie trance, listening to his every word. And that's when the man sniffs the air and declares, there's an unpurified in the group, and demands the followers purify him. Duke begins to panic. He's gonna get killed in these sewers, and then he'll never find his parents, and he'll just become another forgotten casualty of Gotham. When a baton hits one of the guys trying to grab him. Five kids jump in wearing awesome outfits, telling him, we are Robin. They throw bricks, taking the lights out, and they start hitting these zombified goons with wrenches and punching them. Nice roundhouse, Izzy. These guys stink. Yeah, like Troy's gym bag. You've been sniffing my jockstrap, Jay. Troy flips one of the goons over while Rico jumps onto a light pole to try and get a signal on her phone. Duke then turns to Izzy. I thought you guys had a plan. Seriously? You're gonna give us crap after we just saved your butt? Using the past tense isn't accurate. Oh, I like this one already. The Robins all keep fighting off these goons as best as they can, but they quickly get overwhelmed. So Rico thinks fast and lights up a flare, throwing it aside, telling everyone to run for the manhole cover. They all climb out of the sewers as fast as they can, and in front of them, they can see the flashing lights of the GCPD. The Robins realize that Duke got a concussion from a hit on the head, and they get a text stating, leave him in a run. So they book it, leaving Duke to get picked up by the police. He finally wakes up in an interrogation room, and a man with a beard and glasses is sitting in front of him. I want a lawyer. Don't think that'll be necessary, Mr. Thomas. You're not under arrest. Now what it looks like, what happened to the others? Your comrades disappeared as soon as they saw me. Not to worry, they've been taken care of. What do you mean taken care of? Look, I overheard that they were setting bombs up around Gotham. So what are you guys gonna do about that? That's what I want to know from you, Mr. Thomas. What are we going to do about them? We, I have nothing to do with this. Incorrect, now that you are privy to this information and the potential dangers to the citizens of Gotham. Just what are you willing to do about it? Go to those Robin kids, I just want to find my parents. What if I made you an offer? You help with this bomb situation, and I'll help find your parents. You serious? 
What am I going to do about bombs? I'm going to make you a professional. I've had my eye on you for some time, young man. Then, the man left the room, leaving Duke there all by himself. Hours passed and Duke realized that no one was coming back for him. So he got up and he looked around, and then he tried the door. It opened, revealing that he wasn't in a police station at all. He was in a room that was made up to look like one, located in a warehouse. And in front of him was a motorcycle with a red jacket and a helmet. He also finds a phone with a message. We're waiting on the rooftop of 16th and Sprague. On the rooftop, he sees the Robin kids again, and he asks them if they know the guy that led them all here. But they all think he's someone else. Troy thought he was a college recruiter, while another kid found him in a dark alley. Either way, no one knows who he is, and they all get their orders from text messages titled, The Nest. At that moment, The Nest sends over another message, telling them that the first target the bombs are being set on is right in the building in front of them. The Nest isn't even our mystery man. As it turns out, The Nest is another member of the We Are Robins team sitting at her computer at home. The group manages to find the bomb pretty quickly, and then they run into another problem. They don't know how to disarm a bomb. So while Rico is messing with it, Duke starts to text for help. What wire do they cut? Then a subway car starts going through the subway. So all of the kids have to jump to the side just as Rico is getting a signal again. And they get the instructions to help stop it. So they split the team up, three on this bomb and three on another bomb nearby. They all get to their bombs and they follow step one, cut the blue wire. But then they don't have another message. At that moment, a riot begins to break out on the streets above. So Redbird sends off a text, need some backup. The call goes out, Dark as Dawn, Yellow Cape, Shug Ur, Black Domino, and Sidekicker all reply. It's time for the rest of the Robins to arrive. As both teams are continuing to disarm their bombs, the rest of the Robins show up and start saving civilians that are caught up in the riot. But Duke, Troy, and Rico are running into a problem. They can't properly disarm their bomb with subway cars coming through. So while the other team of Dax, Trey, and Izzy manages to sweat bullets, but actually manage to disarm their bomb, and the backup team up above is putting down the riot, the Nest is told to go to bed because it's getting late. She tells her mom that she's trying to save the world here. She then sends off another message, get on the platform and take the next train out of there to Duke, Rico, Troy, just as Izzy, Dre, and Dax are rejoining the group. What, seriously? Meanwhile, on the streets above, the robotic Batman of the GCPD finally arrives to tell everyone to put their hands in the air, robots and rioters alike. The kids all turn to him, but we're helping you. No, you're endangering the lives of yourselves and others. Leave the crime fighting to the professionals. The girl sitting at the Nest computer can see that this is going on through a live web feed. She's confused, but this isn't right. Back with the kids at the last bomb. Troy can't believe it. They can do this, they can save the day. Duke tells him, we can't risk it, man. It's time to get on as the train is getting closer to them. So they all hop on, debating what's about to happen next. This bomb will blow up this entire building. They hope Batman has a plan for it or something. But then they notice Troy isn't boarding the train. I can do this. Can't let them win, he's saying to himself as everyone else is telling him to get on the train. Get on it now! The doors close and the train begins to pull away with everyone shouting, no, 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 no! Troy falls to his knees in front of the bomb, sweat beating down his forehead. I can do this. I can do this. He takes the clippers to the bomb and he cuts a wire. And it explodes, taking out the train tunnel of the building and killing Troy. The kids look in horror as they see the explosion going off behind them. And the girl in the nest can even see it from across town. No actions to stop this? None? None? What's next, Gotham? Deathstroke, the toddler Terminator? Gotham needs to say no. No to Robins! I am. I like Batman. He saved my sister, but I don't want, you know, kids running around doing that. City Council is currently looking into the matter. We are reviewing all options in dealing with this Robin situation. Protesters around Gotham are demanding that the police do something about the so-called Robin situation. The police let this happen! And just everyone seems to be asking, what will Gotham do? Our tale begins with a man demanding to know who this young whelp is that demands that he free his bat monster. The boy removes his hood and he reveals Damian Wayne, son of Batman, and he knocks the man's teeth out. But let's go back a little to where this tale really began. A young girl dives to the bottom of the ocean to recover a mask of her now deceased father. And the footage on the mask reveals that it is Damian Wayne that killed her father. The man was called Nobody. And Damien was training as hard as he has ever trained before when he got a message from his secret island that his pet was loose. His giant man-bat pet, Goliath, spread his wings and flew away. And now, Damien is riding Goliath out of this base. No one takes his friends, even if they are giant man-bats. And after Goliath flies so high that Damien passes out from the lack of oxygen, the two of them return home. But while unconscious, Damien has a dream about the year of blood. 
it's time for it to come back to haunt him. The Year of Blood is his year as an Al Ghul and his attempts to prove himself to his grandfather. He did so many bad things and now with Goliath by his side, Damien has decided that it's time to return the things that he stole in the Year of Blood as trophies and fix the things that he ruined. So, he rides Goliath into the rainforest in South America holding the statue that they stole. They fly right up to a giant statue where they put back on the head of the monster and it comes to life knocking them aside. I gave you back your stupid head, what more do you want? Damien shouts as he hits his whistle, telling Goliath that he doesn't need the bodyguard, he needs the beast. Goliath begins to battle against the giant statue monster and it begins to use its hypno powers against the two of them, changing them. But with their battle growing out of control, the poor village beneath begins to feel the effects and our young woman from earlier begins to save the people while invisible. But as she leaps back in to do what she can, the hypnovision disrupts her cloaking, making her pop up next to Damien. And shockingly, he realizes that this nobody is real. It is not the hypnovision creating this person. She tells him that he has to stop this before he puts more innocent lives at risk. And Damien tells her to back off. He doesn't need her help to stop this thing, just as Goliath bashes it again. Then he turns to her. Hey, I recognize that mask, but if you wanted me to think that you were the real nobody, you should have worn a less revealing outfit, Chica. She smacks him down, you little twerp! The situation grows even worse as the cartels arrive and the statue guardian and Goliath are busy. So Damien and nobody run into the armed guards to drop them. But at that moment, everything gets even crazier and the guardian presents Goliath back to Damien. He will protect this village now. And the elder of the village tells Damien that he did well bringing back the guardian. The guardian walks up to the temple and places himself back in his holding position, allowing Damien to leave, but nobody stops him. You killed my dad. I'm a nobody because of you, Damien Wayne. You want an apology or something? So I could absolve you for your sins? You will forever be unforgiven, Damien. What? Am I supposed to be scared? I could have killed you at any time, but now I'm gonna wait for you to finish this stupid little redemption quest of yours. It's obvious that people need your help. It is time that Damien Al Ghul started making amends. Are you stupid or something? That's what I'm trying to do here. It's not I anymore, Damien. It's we. And thus, the year of redemption continues with a new ally. Damon and Nobody continue their journey and they work together and they become friends of sorts. Such good friends that they eventually have an understanding for each other. He even learns her name is actually Maya. She sends off a message to her employer, the one that hired her to kill Damien, informing him that she quits. And Deathstroke replies with, no one quits. But something else begins to move behind the scenes. The body of Talia al Ghul has been recovered after her death and she's finally being revived through a Lazarus pit. She wakes up with a fright and knocks out the individual that finally raised her. And as she walks around these caves, she discovers that she's in the dragon's pit, the heart of the Lazarus. Damien and Maya move to their next objective. And while Damien puts back what he stole, Deathstroke catches up with Maya. He kicks her across the face for quitting and then he ties her to a nearby pillar. It's then that he realizes that this is not the former nobody, it's his kid. He asks, do all of you daughters of assassins have a club or something? But Goliath arrives just in time to save her from being crushed by the falling pillar. So Deathstroke starts to shoot Goliath, hoping to drop the giant bat and the pillar with the girl on it all at once until Damien jumps in. Damien manages to drop Deathstroke and he gets on his back, pulling him to the ground. Deathstroke gets back up and he runs off shooting at Damien as he does it. Without Batman, you're just a kid in over your head. But Damien is a trained assassin and the two of them seem evenly matched. So Damien has a new idea. He stands before Deathstroke and he asks him, Slade, what'll it take to clear our names and square away her debt? Deathstroke thinks about it. Five million. So Damien hits his computer and tells him, done. Deathstroke looks down at his wrist computer. Rich kids, check cleared. We're done here. See you kids around. And then he slinks into the darkness. Deathstroke is easily bought off. They both make a break for it as the place is about to go underwater and Maya wants to know why he would give up so much money for her. One life for the amount of money that could have built a hospital. But Maya quickly realizes Damien isn't running for the exit. He's running into a secret passage to see what the secrets of the kings were. And he finds a Lazarus pit. All of this is about a Lazarus pit. They continue their journey to a portion of Al Ghul Island that very few have gone to. The place where Damien put all of his corrupted clones and where they welcome him as their brother. They smile back at him, happy for the lives that he's given them ever since he freed them. A life of the greatest pleasures in the world. And then he goes to his vault to get the last trophy to return, to finally end his year of redemption, only to find it missing. And that's when he sees the person who took it. He charges at them, demanding that they face him. And they do as they put a blade to his neck. It's his mother, Talia Al Ghul. 
She demands that he yield, that she is here to save him. And he denies anything that she offers because he needed saving from the Al Ghouls. And Batman showed him that. But she tells him that he doesn't understand. They need those Year of Blood relics back to save this world. She explains the whole thing was a plan to get Damien to help his grandfather. There is a war between Dendarga and his family of immortals and the Al Ghul family. Both sides claim to be the first guardians of the Lazarus Pits, but Raz used Damien to get the artifacts to lock Dendarga into this place forever, sealing him here with those artifacts. Now with the pieces missing, Dendarga could rise at any time and then use the Lazarus Pits to revive his immortal family. But it's too late, and Talia now realizes that Dendarga is already raising his family. She grabs her son as she begins to run for the exit as he demands that she put him down so they could fight. But behind them is a series of monsters and tentacles and skeletons and everything trying to kill them. The whole Al Ghul island splits down the center as Dendarga tries to bring the entire Al Ghul family down into the abyss. Talia tells him to stop this. She will not fall and her family will not either. But Darga tells him that the Al Ghuls are cursed just as Damien's brothers hit Dendarga. Maya sheds tears as she watches the clones giving their lives to protect their brother and Damien watches as his clones are swallowed by the monstrous worms popping out of the ground. And they smile as they look back at Damien. Brothers! Damien and Talia fall into the ocean as the island sinks further and further and Goliath and Maya leap in after them trying to recover them. But this isn't over. The island of Al Ghul may have sunk, but Dendarga is now at war with the Al Ghuls. Talia steps forward as the last true remaining Al Ghul and claims a kingdom as her own, telling them that she is now their new queen. And Damien wakes up after surviving the destruction of an island. And the first thing he asks is, why did you kill me, mother? She looks him in the eye and she tells him that she will forever ask herself the same question. Was it madness, desperation, self-deception? All that she is aware of is that she was lost in the vision of another, and now she is free of that. She only wants a chance to prove herself as the mother of her son. You want redemption after what you did to me? Family is redemption. I ask you to accept me as you accepted your brothers. And then she places a black pearl on the table next to him. Inside this pearl is the monster that I once was, and I ask that you carefully consider joining me or condemning me for my actions. If you choose to condemn me, you must do so fully, and I ask that you use this pearl to restore the monster that I once was. Only then can you get the retribution that you seek. For you, mother, I would break a solemn vow that I made, and I will be there with the pearl and a sword in my hand, ready to plunge them into your black heart. Damien put back on his uniform and he walked over to Maya, where she pulled up all of the info on Batman's disappearance. He went missing while Damien was gone. Batman is dead, she says in disbelief. But Damien denies that. No, he's not. Batman will never die. But Damien, look at the evidence. What do you want? Tears for me? I came back. My mother came back. Why won't Batman come back? Death is more of a gray area these days. Though I do suppose the people of Gotham will panic and need to be attended to. So Maya tells Robin that he is an inspiration. His brothers died because he inspired them. And for no other reason. His R means redemption, not Robin. She embraces him and tells him that while he lost his brothers, he gained a sister and that he is now forgiven. Maya gave up her nobody identity and Damien set Goliath free the next day. In response, Goliath hugged both Damien and Maya before flying free for the first time in his entire life. And Damien, he returned to Gotham because there are some kids that need his attention. A small gang calling themselves Robin and going by the slogan, We are Robin. A young boy is standing at a liquor store, proud of himself for stopping a robbery and telling the clerk, I am Robin. But that's when a police officer comes into the store and sees a man on the ground and the young boy in Robin color standing there holding a gun. The robber got up in a hurry and the cop tried to stop him and in the confusion of it all, the young boy shot the police officer and the robber. As he stood there over the two dead men, he tried to comfort himself by telling himself, I am Robin, I'm Robin. I am Robin. The situation grew out of control quickly with the police going against these teenage vigilantes. The city council even passed an anti-Robin law and the kids begin getting beat up for wearing Robin's colors. It is now against the law in Gotham to wear red or have an R in your clothing. Which brings us to Duke as he walks the streets of Gotham talking to Rico. They are two members of the We Are Robin gang that has been involved in the recent events where they stopped the bombs. And they are talking about this recent Robin law. Rico explains that she was sent off to Gotham Academy because of this whole thing. And he tells her to lay low. Once this whole Robin law thing passes, her parents will calm down and send her home. That's when a police officer sees Duke's red shoes and asks him about them because they look very Robin-ish. 
Duke explains that he uses his shoes for walking. Never running, he doesn't run. Because running means that you're doing something wrong, officer. And that's the story of his shoes. So the officer slams Duke against a cop car and tells him, Red means Robin. And in Gotham, Robin means you're under arrest, smart guy. Duke waits for the car to be passing over a bridge, and then he slips out of the cuffs and jumps out of the car into the bay shouting, I am Robin! Meanwhile, elsewhere, Jason Todd, otherwise known as Red Hood, otherwise known as a former Robin, gets a phone call from an old friend, Tim Drake, otherwise known as Red Robin. He explains what's going on in Gotham for these Robin kids, and Jason comments that it really doesn't affect Tim. He went with the whole Red Robin thing, wings and all. So it really doesn't matter. These Robin kids should figure out the whole thing on their own. That's what a real Robin would do. And Tim tells him, the real Robin is here already. Jason realizes that this means Damian Wayne has returned home. He must be taking matters into his own hands with his father missing. And that's exactly what's happening. As Duke gets the Robins together for a meeting in which they decide that they're going to stand up to the police and tell them, we are Robin. Damian exclaims from the rafters, that's moronic, you're not Robin, I am Robin. They argue for a minute, but Damien leaves it up to them. If you are Robin, defend yourselves. And he begins to beat on the kids. Meanwhile, high above the streets of Gotham, the Bat Blimp is getting word that there is a riot forming in one of the old warehouses. Jim Gordon suits up in the Robo Batman suit and he launches down into the scene, crashing through a window, causing all of the kids to pause and look at him. But it's Damien that steps up to this Batman. And uh, who are you exactly? I'm Batman. Damien looks to his right and then he looks to his left to see if he's being pranked. You have got to be kidding me. He jumps right in to fight against Batman and he gets the upper hand easily, but eventually Batman gets one good hit in, throwing Damien aside. He wipes his mouth and he tells his Batman, enough, this is Gotham, which is where Batman and Robin with Commissioner Gordon on the rooftop and a bat signal in the air and a damn penguin flying around and a damn umbrella happen. As he talks, Batman gets closer, and then Damien grabs a loose electrical wire and tags Batman with it, shorting out the suit. All of the kids look at the triumphant Damien and realize he is Robin. And that's when Jason and Tim arrive. Um, hey, easy to kill Robin and easy to forget Robin. Tim jumps in. Technically, you're both easy to kill Robin. I should be the not so easily killed Robin, but with a cooler name. Damien tells them both to get out of his way. He's hunting Robins and he isn't gonna listen to them. But Jason tells him, they know someone that he will listen to. Across the world, the first Robin, Dick Grayson gets the call to come back to Gotham and join this situation. While later that night, the kid that started this whole thing gets a knife in his back from a talent, one of the assassins of the Court of the Owls. And the court themselves make a comment that this is all going according to their plans. Dick Grayson is on his way home. Our next day starts strong with every Robin in Gotham arriving to a gathering that the real Robins have arranged and Damien telling them they aren't Robins, none of them. And Grayson, the first Robin, the one that started it all, tells the kids they aren't Robin. Damien's right, but we're gonna fix that. We're gonna train you to be real Robins. Welcome to Robin School. They train them fast and furious until eventually they need to use all of the Robins. Grayson decides they need information on this whole thing, what the police and the city council are planning. So he breaks Tim, Jason, and Damien into various groups and he throws batches of the Robin kids with each of them. He then takes Duke high above the city to watch everything go down. And that's when it happens. The police arrive at every location in full force to arrest Tim, Jason, Damien, and every Robin kid. Then the police shine a light on Grayson and Duke, and Duke realizes it was a setup. They knew they were coming. Grayson turns to Duke. I have a transmitter on me that led the police to the location of every mission. Duke follows Grayson to the roof and Grayson reveals. He trained everyone so that he could gain control of the arrests and get everyone out of harm's way. You manipulated us all. You just wanted to tuck us all away safe like we're your damn kids. Grayson smiles and he turns to Duke. Batman once told me that being a Robin is about one thing, family, and I take care of my family. He then jumps off the side of the building, leaving Duke there to get arrested. All of the Robins get brought to some weird new prison system that was created by the city council. Something with suspended prison cells and the such. Jim Gordon as Batman stands there with Harvey Bullock asking the question, where's the due process? What is this? This isn't a normal arrest. He then notices some of the kids have black eyes and they look a little beaten up. And he asks who spoke to these kids without a legal guardian around. Jim Gordon is a Batman that works for the GCPD. And he doesn't like this one bit, so he decides he's going to get to the bottom of this whole thing himself. While this discussion is going on, Damian Wayne decides he'll figure out a way out of this, because there's only one Robin after all. Batman calls the city council to ask them where the due process is, but he's easily blown off, so he decides to take his suit and go to the home of one of the members of the city council to see if he can get more answers. Once he enters the home, he sees someone else had the same idea. Grayson is already there. Grayson throws Batman out the window and onto the fire escape. Batman can't even stay standing with how effective Grayson is at fighting, and he gets Batman down fast, so Batman goes to plan B. Wait! He lowers his mask and tells Grayson, Stop! It's me! Talk to me! Grayson turns and sees Jim Gordon. 
Kind of figured it was you underneath that mask, but, well, you kind of snuck up on me. I know the cops are rounding up the Robins, as they are told, instead of figuring out what's really going on. This whole thing feels like a setup, Jim. I went through the officer's place and I spoke to his friends. Nothing is adding up. Don't you get it, Grayson? This was inevitable. Vigilantes and the police? How many times did I almost fight you back when I was a lieutenant? But something is off. Well, I'm gonna go with you to figure this out. We're on the edge of something, Jim. And Batman and Grayson jump off to solve this. Meanwhile, back at the cells, a mystery person calls the officers away, leaving him alone with the kids. And Jason realizes who's behind this right away, as another kid is in shock, stating they can't be real. It's the Court of the Owls, and they've just revealed themselves. While Batman and Grayson are following the clues and starting to ask the right questions, like where did the GCPD get the funding to build that prison? And why are there owl statues in all of the buildings that they visit? The court begins to push their plans further by taking Jason and Tim out of their cages and telling them that they will fight to the death as the court is looking for their new gray son. Damien panics as he realizes his brothers are about to fight it out. And Tim looks to Jason. You've been waiting for this. Never been a patient man, Tim. And they begin to go at it. Both are evenly matched as Jason throws everything into it and Tim dodges and then trips up Jason. Tim gets a shot across Jason's face and Jason slams him into the wall. How could two men trained by Batman possibly beat each other? They can't and they won't as Jason throws Tim over the cells and the kids grab him by the ankles and then fling him to Damien's cell. The momentum of swinging each cell slams them into each other which gives Tim more momentum to go higher and higher until he gets to where the lever that controls all of the cells is located and then he opens them. The Robins all jump out with Damien leading the way and the combined might of every Robin allows them to overtake the court. Tim lands next to Jason. If we're keeping count, that stunt I just pulled off should firmly put me on top. Dick could have probably done it in less time. With that, everyone begins to make a break for the rooftops, but as they get to the top of the building, they see a lot of talons ready to stop them. They all jump in ready to fight against the talons, though some of them freeze in fear from the hidden society being a real thing. The talons are better trained than the Robin kids, but luckily, Damien redirects one of their attacks to a series of explosive barrels. Meanwhile, Grayson has followed the trail down into the Court of Owls headquarters and he is battling some talons of his own. Back with the Robin kids, the ceiling caves in from the explosion and everyone grabs some of the cell chains to prevent themselves from falling to the bottom floor, successfully giving them enough time to get everyone out of the GCPD and the prison building. Damien runs off ahead of everyone and Red Robin, Jason, and Duke tell all of the other children that they haven't been trained properly, so go home. They'll train them all when this is over. And then, Jason, Tim, and the We Are Robin crew all get to work. They follow Rico to the location of one of the talons that she followed back when it attacked Gotham Academy. And conveniently, it's the Court of the Owls base. Just at that moment, Batman comes crashing through the wall in his robotic suit. The machines in the center of the room begin to hatch the elite talons, the best of the best and the worst of the assassins. Batman begins to blow up the central hatching device and everyone begins to make a break for it down into some tunnels while Batman calls in the GCPD to clean up these terrorists. Meanwhile, Grayson has made it to the central room of the Court of the Owls building and inside, he finds Lincoln March. The same Lincoln March from the Night of the Owls in the Batman Eternal Saga. Grayson tells him that it's over, but Lincoln explains that this whole thing was to get their son back. Dick Grayson was originally intended to be in the Court of the Owls, and Batman prevented it. So they arranged this entire ordeal to bring Grayson back to Gotham and get him to join them. But they don't need him anymore because they have their new Gray son. And that's when we see Damian Wayne with a Court of the Owls mask and a small band of elite talons guarding the exit out of the tunnels, preventing the kids from escaping. He tells everyone that he's fixed it. It's time to go home. You have no idea what has happened and what you are facing or what I have done to save you all. Duke puts it together. I get it. They locked us all up and tried to kill us to try and get one of us to join them. And one of us did. Jason looks him over. Pal, you are standing with a bunch of monsters wearing an owl mask. I don't think this is over. And everyone jumps in to fight it out some more. Meanwhile, Grayson is looking on a monitor at Damien wearing the mask and he turns to Lincoln. How? Lincoln explains that when Damien broke away from the cages, he ran into their inner sanctum and he fought against the elite talents. The elites are a failsafe. In case the court ever lost the city, the elites would destroy what had been lost. Damien saw that everyone would die, and in that everyone, so would the currently amnesiac Bruce Wayne, Damien's father. They offered to put their talents back in their coffins if Damien would take Grayson's place. And he did, to save the city, his family, and his father. Meanwhile, Damien is beating down Jason Todd until it's just Tim and Damien. Tim tells him that he doesn't want to fight him. He just wants to understand, this isn't right. He's Robin. You don't get it, Tim. It's fairly obvious after all of this, I'm not Robin. And then he drops Tim. He then takes out all six of the We Are Robin kids and declares, it's done. But Duke gets up one more time. 
Duke and Damien begin fighting it out, and Damien asks, Why can't Duke leave him alone? I'm only doing what Batman did. What Batman had to do! I'm making the sacrifice that Batman made. While they're fighting it out, dozens of kids are jumping onto the battlefield shouting, I am Robin! And they all begin a hopeless battle against the elite talents. Duke then jumps in to keep fighting against Damien. I figured you out just like I figured out Grayson. You're Damian Wayne, son of Bruce Wayne, son of Batman, the son he doesn't remember. To beat something, he sacrificed his memory. Your dad did think of his family, his responsibilities. And on that note, they both continue their battle as Duke continues his speech. Your dad sacrificed everything. He sacrificed you, and you're trying to do the same thing. You don't know me, kid. I don't think you know you. Back with Grayson, he begins to beat down Lincoln March, and that's when Lincoln tells him, if you try and shut us down, we'll kill the kid. His mask has a nano bomb in it that has been slowly sinking into his skin since he put it on. Back with Duke and Damien, they continue going at it, but Duke lays it out for Damien. These kids, my family all around us fighting the talents, they were inspired, just like you were by your father. So I get it. I get you want to sacrifice yourself and give up on my family. But here's the thing. I'm not Robin. You are! Damien considers it and he considers that Duke is right. He throws the owl mask aside and he jumps in to begin saving the kids, the Robin gang. Rico runs up to Duke's side as he is now on the ground on a bloody mess and she tells him, we're doing it, we're winning, we are doing it. And while this battle is going on, Lincoln makes another offer to Grayson. Join them and they will make the Robin laws go away, pull the police back and let Damien go on living. Much later, with the elite talents defeated by the Robin gang, Damien and Batman, Jason, Tim, Damien, and Grayson all went back to the Batcave. They can't believe what Grayson did. He betrayed them and left them the fight for themselves. But he tells them he did it for them because he would have done it for all of them. Duke went out with his friends and they went to the grave of one of the boys that was lost and he told them, they aren't Robin, not yet. They aren't ready to be Robin before he walked off. He heads down an alley and he calls out Damien for stalking him, telling him that he can just come out and say hi. Damien lands in front of him. I'm Robin, I don't say hi. They stare at each other. Fine, hi. You wanna go see a movie, Damien? I don't see movies. I'm Robin. You said that about saying hi. Fine. But I'm not getting popcorn. I'm Robin. That's when we finally see the arrangement that Grayson made to save everyone, as the Court of the Owls welcomes him back into the fold, to the Parliament of the Owls. He is their newest member. I hope you guys enjoyed today's full story. It's a little bit shorter than normal, but don't forget to check back next Monday when we bring you more full stories. Every Monday is a full story right here at the channel. Thank you guys so much for your continued support. I'll see you next time right here.